So tell me, um, am I taking things correctly the way I have? I mean, I just figured out how to take the medication myself. Yeah, it's a good question. And you know, you are doing a really good job. Uh, the schedule that you've uh, developed is working very well and, it, and, it, and it's appropriate. Do you ever forget to take your medications? Well, I, I don't really. Um, I might forget to take the cranberry capsule at bedtime sometimes. You know, you fall asleep watching television mm -hmm. and you completely forget. But Does it's that happen often? Not very often, you know, like once or times? twice a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. But my morning routine, I never forget. I know that I, I take the thyroid and the diuretic and the t -oproprium every day. Perfect. Okay. Very good. All right. Is it okay that I'm taking the medication together like that? Yeah. The medications that you're taking, I, I have uh, don't have any concerns or I'm not aware of any uh, drug interactions that we need to be concerned about. And, and really, Cynthia, you're doing very, very well. Uh, you know the names of your medications, you know what they're for, and you're taking them appropriately. So I think you're doing very, very well. Well, I appreciate uh, you going through this with me, and I feel very reassured that I'm doing things correctly. Good. I'm glad, you know, because that's what these appointments are about, is, okay. to, is to reassure people about their medications and that, that you're doing well. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, before we leave the medication list, though, I wanted just to quickly ask um, anything else maybe that you can think of from the health food store or uh, maybe a prescription that you may have gotten filled at another pharmacy if we were closed, um, a sample maybe that your physician gave you at a, at a visit, anything like that? No, I, I do take the odd ibuprofen. Oh, okay. Uh, but right. that's just for headache and it's just three or four times a year. Are you taking or using any eye drops? any ear drops, yeah. nasal sprays. Uh, how about any creams, uh, ointments, or gels for any skin disorders? Anything like that? No. Any no. patches? No. And no. what about an injectable, like a B12 or anything like that? No, no, not at this time. Uh, but my doctor said that she might be changing my blood pressure pills, so you never know. I might be back. Okay, good. With some more questions. Well, mm -hmm. I... Uh, Speaking of blood pressure medications and, and the blood pressure uh, discussion with your physician, um, I do have a blood pressure monitor here with me. It's right there. And I'm, I, I, what I'd like to do or like to recommend is um, that we, we take a couple of blood pressure readings um, today just to see how your sure. blood pressure is before you go on holidays. I think that might be a good idea. Do you mind if, if we do that? No, not at all. Okay, great. Okay, so we've got your two readings here, and the first one was 137 over 83, and the second one was uh, 134 over 80. So the good news is, is that both of those readings are well within the normal uh, range, and uh, I'm going to just uh, document those in your file. And the reason for that is so that we have a record of today's readings and we have something to compare it to if we do any more readings in the future. Okay? Sure. And the other thing I wanted uh, to discuss is I think it might be a really good idea for you to monitor and uh, document your blood pressure at home. Um, and the reason for that is when you go to see your physician or you come in to see me, you could bring in these readings uh, mm -hmm. for us to have a look at. And it would give us some really good, rich information and insight onto your, you know, about your overall mm -hmm. blood pressure control. Do you have a monitor at home? No, I don't. Use? No, I don't. Um, but it sounds like a great idea, but I don't think I want to buy one right now. Okay. I'm just way too busy getting ready to go away on yeah, the holidays. So. Fair enough. Um, I understand that. But uh, I'll make a note in your file and maybe we can, you know, talk about it sure. again when you get back. How's that? That'd be great. Okay. And any other questions about your medications? No, uh, not at all. Not okay. this time. All right. So, Cynthia, like I said, I think we've had a really, really good discussion today about your medications and how you take them. Um, I will need a couple of extra minutes uh, to complete my report mm -hmm. and to finish the meds check document. And with your permission, I would like to send a copy of those documents to your physician. I think it's important for her uh, to have that current list of medications, which include your non-prescription medications and things that we talked about, okay? So it will take a couple minutes. You're welcome to sit here uh, and wait while I do do that or if you'd like to go browse through the pharmacy but it'll probably be about five minutes or so. Continuing from where we left off in part one, part two showed Iris discussing medication adherence and drug interaction issues. Cynthia was reassured by Iris that she was indeed taking her medications as prescribed. 
In addition, Iris mentioned she was not aware of any drug interactions with Cynthia's current medications, once again applauding Cynthia's correct usage of them. Iris complimented Cynthia on her knowledge and management of her medications, which positively reinforced Cynthia to continue to take her medications as she'd been doing. To ensure a complete medication profile, Iris probed further about additional medications that Cynthia may have neglected to mention during the conversation about her medication list. This included items such as over-the-counter products, drugs filled at another pharmacy, or samples from the doctor. Iris tried jogging Cynthia's memory by listing a bunch of other products, such as eye drops, nasal sprays, patches, creams, ointments, or injectable medications. During this interaction, Cynthia remembered that she took ibuprofen three to four times a year for headaches, and it was Iris's persistence that enabled her to further update the medication profile. Cynthia was provided with many opportunities throughout the appointment to ask questions. Iris picked up on the possibility of Cynthia's blood pressure medications being modified and with Cynthia's permission took a blood pressure reading. While this was certainly above and beyond the minimum standard set for a meds check, Iris recognized this as being in Cynthia's best interest. It should also be noted that this physical, albeit minor, assessment establishes a powerful bond between Iris and Cynthia. Subtle as it may seem, it's bonds like these that solidify the relationship and drive patient loyalty. Iris further capitalized on this blood pressure measurement to suggest that Cynthia would benefit from testing her blood pressure at home. Even though Cynthia was not ready to commit to purchasing a monitor at this time, Iris documented the recommendation as a discussion point for a future appointment. Prior to completion of the meds check documentation, Iris informed Cynthia that she would need a few minutes to compile her report. Cynthia consented to have Iris send her medication list to her physician after Iris explained the benefits of her physician having a record of her updated medication list. Iris offered Cynthia the option of staying in the counseling room or browsing the aisles of the pharmacy while the medication list was being completed for her. Please go to part three for the continuation of this scenario.